Welcome to the world of Car 54. Where are you? A classic comedy series that first hit the airwaves in 1961. This show takes us on a hilarious ride with two New York City police officers, Gunther Tootie and Francis Muldoon, as they patrol the streets of the Bronx. Their adventures are filled with laughs, surprises, and heartfelt moments. One fascinating fact about the show is that many of the exterior scenes were actually filmed in the Bronx, giving it an authentic feel. Another is that the series featured several guest stars who later became famous, including Al Lewis, who went on to play Grandpa Munster. Out of all the characters, Officer Gunther Tootie stands out with his memorable catchphrase, Oof, oof, his lovable and bumbling nature made every episode a treat to watch. Now, we're curious to hear from you. What is your most cherished memory or personal experience related to Car 54? Where are you? Your stories and memories are important to us, and we'd love to hear them in the comments below. Keep watching for more funny, shocking, and touching facts about this beloved series. Clear blue sky right on the dot. He's back for three months. Every Car 54, Where Are You? is a television series that first aired in 1961. It was a comedy show set in New York City, following the funny adventures of two police officers, Francis Muldoon and Gunther Tootie. They were part of the 53rd Precinct in the Bronx and rode around in their patrol car, number 54. The show was known for its humor and for showing the lighter side of the police force during a time when television was still black and white. It stood out for its unique take on the lives of everyday cops and the people they met on their beat. The series was created by Nat Hyken, who was also behind the Phil Silver show, another comedy hit. Car 54, Where Are You? ran for two seasons and became a memorable part of TV history for its catchy theme song and the lovable characters who made audiences laugh every week. O-T-I-N, not in. In other words, O-U-T. In the landscape of television history, certain actors stand out for their work across different eras. Ossie Davis, alongside his wife Ruby D, graced the screen in a series of films that spanned over four decades, showcasing a partnership that extended both on and off the screen. Meanwhile, Charlotte Ray, known for her television roles, celebrated life's milestones with fellow actors, such as attending Carol Channing's 90th birthday, highlighting the close-knit relationships formed within the industry. As for the show in question, it faced the inevitable evolution of time, with real-world changes like airport renamings and political shifts, which would have necessitated updates to its theme song to reflect the new era had the show continued beyond its original run. Wait, hold it! Don't forget to defrost the refrigerator once a week! Once a week, I got it! Okay, so Even someone with a strong dislike for television, like the esteemed writer William Faulkner, found himself drawn to a particular show, making it a weekly ritual to watch at a friend's place. Meanwhile, Carl Ballantine, a performer with a unique approach to magic, earned his fame by being the only magician who never performed a trick. His early attempts at sleight of hand were abandoned in favor of a comedic act that led him to become a Las Vegas headliner. The production of this beloved show took place at the historic Biograph Studios in the Bronx, a site with its own storied past dating back to 1912 and surviving various ownership changes until its destruction by fire in 1980. Of course, I told him to give you some unimportant... Charlotte Ray's dedication to her role was evident as she traveled coast to coast weekly from New York to Los Angeles. Despite the grueling schedule, her commitment never wavered. In a similar display of dedication, Paul Reed, known for his portrayal of Captain Block, was credited in every episode of the second season, even when his character did not make an appearance. The show's memorable theme song painted a vivid picture of the bustling city life, highlighting various chaotic scenarios from different boroughs and ended with the catchy line calling for the missing patrol car. Come back for another load. Good work, Judy. Just doing my duty. In the world of classic television, facts about actors and production often emerge that paint a clearer picture of the era. Al Lewis, known for his role as a lovable grandpa, was actually born in 1923, contrary to his earlier claim of 1910. This revelation came posthumously and raised questions about other aspects of his life story, which remain largely unconfirmed. Fred Gwynn, another key actor, lent his voice to the sponsor's message following the opening credits. Meanwhile, Charlotte Ray's connection to the show was not just on screen. 
Her former husband, John Strauss, was the musical talent behind the memorable tunes that accompanied the series. These details offer a glimpse into the connections and stories behind the scenes. I want you to meet Officer Muldoon. <laughs> How do you do? This is Melinda Walsh. A memorable line often attributed to Cary Grant was actually born from Larry Storch's nightclub act. During an impersonation of Grant, Storch greeted Judy Garland, who had just entered with Judy, 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 a line that became associated with Grant despite never appearing in his films. In another connection to the show, Gerald Hyken, known for his role as Cats the Butcher, shared a family tie with Nat Hyken, the show's creator, being his cousin. Additionally, Joe E. Ross shared a surname with Beatrice Pond's real-life husband, David Ross. The coincidence extended to their on-screen roles as married couples in two different comedy series, reflecting a unique crossover between their personal and professional lives. Fender. Well? Oh, it's beyond repair. You need a new Fender. Yeah. In the process of adapting to the black and white screen, the production team took creative liberties with the appearance of the patrol cars. They altered the color scheme to ensure clarity and avoid confusion among viewers. The vehicles, which in reality featured a combination of white, green, and black, were modified for visual effect. Specifically, the green sections were changed to red for filming purposes. This adjustment was made to the cars that were otherwise consistent with the New York Police Department's vehicles from that era, which had distinctive white roofs, trunk lids, and green bodies. Additionally, there was a notable change in the show regarding a character's name. Initially introduced as Paul, Captain Block's first name was later switched to Martin as the series progressed. This alteration was one of the few character-related changes that occurred throughout the show's run. A cop car! Let's get out of here! Shirt, we gotta get it back before it's missed! The loss of Bruce Kirby marked a significant moment for the classic comedy, leaving Hank Garrett as the sole remaining regular cast member. This transition underscores the passage of time and the lasting appeal of the show that brought laughter to many. In a twist of fate, Al Lewis and Fred Gwynn, who once shared the screen as police officers, reunited as a different iconic duo in the Supernatural sitcom, The Monsters showcasing their range and chemistry. Meanwhile, Joe E. Ross, known for his distinctive catchphrase, ventured into the music world with a memorable contribution to the rhythm of Milt Jackson's jazz and samba proving that the influence of the show extended beyond television and into other cultural realms. To the men, I could make a switch. You stay out of this! Anderson, call an assembly right here! Larry Storch, celebrated for his comedic talent, left a lasting impression on audiences with his portrayal of Corporal Randolph Agarn in the sitcom F Troop. His career spanned various performances, including a memorable final stand-up act in Los Angeles at the age of 91. His contributions to comedy were recognized with a star on the Palm Springs Walk of Fame. Storch's early career was marked by a serendipitous encounter with band leader Phil Harris, leading to his first professional gig at Cyro's nightclub, thanks to Lucille Ball's encouragement. The show faced challenges behind the scenes. NBC's proposal to buy part ownership for a third season renewal was declined by creator Nat Hyken. The show's sponsor, Procter & Gamble, attempted a move to CBS, which was unsuccessful. Hyken, Feeling overwhelmed by the single camera setup and issues with actor Joe E. Ross's line memorization, chose to end the series after two seasons, stepping away from television production thereafter. The show's authenticity was enhanced by filming exterior scenes in the city island neighborhood of the Bronx, adding a genuine touch to the setting. This choice of location contributed to the show's unique atmosphere and visual storytelling. Ain't that green, do you hear? Green. We'll pick it up in two hours. Come on, out the back door. Charlotte Ray faced a challenging battle with bone cancer and passed away at the age of 92, leaving behind a legacy through her family and work. Al Lewis, known for his role as Officer Leo Schnossier, made his first appearance in the show's seventh episode in a different character before joining the main cast in the 13th episode. His versatility was showcased early on as he portrayed a city employee in a memorable eviction scene, demonstrating his ability to engage audiences with different character dynamics. Got a pistol rage. Do it, Jolly. Oh, wait, wait. Maybe it would be a novel idea. A New York. Charlotte Ray, known for her role in the classic show, had a deep appreciation for the groundbreaking sitcom All in the Family, making a special appearance in it. Beatrice Pond shared more than just screen time with Joe E. Ross. They both had the surname Ross in real life, 
with Beatrice being married to David Ross. Their on-screen chemistry was also seen in the Phil Silver show. Adding to the show's legacy, its theme song lives on through a parody used in Sirius from City of the Day contest performed by Don Daneman, connecting past entertainment with present audiences. Good evening, sir. Have you ever... Oh, it's you. And the show, the officer's car was equipped with a special speedometer mandated by the New York City Police Department for accuracy in legal matters. This device was essential for traffic law enforcement. Additionally, the vehicle featured an auxiliary fan, a necessary comfort before the advent of car air conditioning. Outside the series, Jake Lamida, a former boxer, attempted to revive his career in 1954, but was defeated by Billy Kilgore in what would be his final match. These details reflect the authenticity and historical context the show aimed to portray, blending real-life elements with its comedic narrative. Front row. Okay, folks, the auction will start in just a few minutes. Would you all please be seated? In the backdrop of New York's bustling boroughs, a reference to Idlewild in a popular show's theme song was actually a nod to the then-named Idlewild Airport in Queens. This airport, which opened its doors on July 1, 1948, was initially named New York International Airport Anderson Field to honor Major General Alexander E. Anderson, a World War I veteran and esteemed local entrepreneur. Following the tragic assassination of President John F. Kennedy in 1963, the Queens City Council moved swiftly to rename the airport in his memory. The official renaming to John F. Kennedy International Airport took place on December 24, 1963, marking a significant moment in the city's history. You can't live here anymore. Georgie, you look tired. Sit down. In the midst of laughter and lighthearted plots, the show experienced a real-life loss that cast a shadow over its comedic facade. Joe E. Ross, who played Officer Gunther Tootie, faced a personal tragedy during the show's run. His wife passed away unexpectedly, leaving a void that contrasted sharply with his on-screen persona's constant joviality. This event brought a somber reality to the set, reminding the cast and crew that beyond the scripted mishaps and humor, they were not immune to life's unpredictable nature. Inspector Corey! <laughs> you caught us at a bad time. I want to see you in your office. Just doing a little spring cleaning. It's all